And um, I would like to, uh, as, um, uh, would like to go back to Bob's remark of this morning, where he said that we are a movement. And in fact, kind of, we are not only a movement now, kind of our movement has been in the making for at least kind of, uh, you know, uh, at least in my own experience, uh, the last four decades. Uh, and what we have seen in the past is fragmentation. We have kind of the environmental movement and then social issue movements. We have consciousness movements, but it really was not kind of connected as a whole. And some of that we have also seen kind of in, around the new economics, right? So there are the people who it's, uh, it's all about currency and money and it's all about ownership or it's all about conscious consuming. And yes, we know kind of all of these are important pieces of the bigger picture. So part of movement creation really is that we become more familiar with connecting the dots and seeing what we do as part of a larger whole. So I want to contribute to that conversation uh, 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 three or four points. Uh, and the first one is an uh, evolutionary framework of the current transformation that we are a part of, which is basically the current transformation of capitalism. And if you look at the, an evolutionary framework of the modern economy, what is a modern economy? It's division of labor. It's kind of where we have kind of high productivity through division of labor. So how do we, um, how do we coordinate the whole? How do we put the pieces back together? And there has been kind of one answer, and that's kind of called through regulation and hierarchy. And that we call it in Europe mercantilism, or in the 20th, uh, 20th century we call it socialism in Eastern Europe. But it's basically the state, kind of one central agency in part of kind of connecting the dots, uh, putting the whole together. The second answer to the coordination problem, and that's economy 2.0, is markets. And that's basically markets and competition, and kind of we know all around that, and this uh, thoughts words around that. Huge progress, huge kind of growth, and huge negative externalities, which then lead to the third stage, which is basically around organized interest groups that uh, emerge in order to mitigate and deal with the negative externalities and has, uh, that have led to a whole kind of uh, uh, generation of innovations and in institutions uh, uh, around kind of Federal Reserve, around uh, Social Security, uh, around environmental standards. And that has worked throughout the 20th century uh, in some parts of the OECD world quite well but we see it fail in the 21st century dealing with global externalities. And that was nowhere more clear than the collapse of the talks in Copenhagen and Wall Street preventing Washington doing effective banking uh, regulation. So we see a system here that has worked quite well for parts of the world in the 20th century, but now it hits the wall. And we have a conversation that says, well, is it this one or is it kind of what we had before? While in reality, we need to move forward and we need a new model, kind of a new coordination mechanism that n doesn't revolve around special interest and organized interest groups, but that revolves around seeing and acting from the whole. That uh, revolves around the systemic capacity of key actors to pull together around comments rather than pursuing abstract kind of group interests that are in conflict with each other on a macro level, which is kind of the main uh, 3.0 way of organizing. So that's the framework. Uh, and so what's, what I find exciting about the current moment that we are at the birth of a new coordination mechanism. We know that the three old responses, which is more government, more market, or more stakeholder dialogue will not produce the responses that we need to this century's challenges. But what we need is a new systemic, collective innovation capacity that innovates the system at the scale of the whole and not in, just in small pockets of the system. The question, and that's my uh, second slide, is okay, uh, if that's kind of a framework where basically we have to rethink and reinvent all the key dimensions of the economy from an uh, consciousness. So what I basically said so far is evolution of the economy is the evolution of consciousness. And it means that we move uh, from an ego and economic laws are transformed 
as a function of consciousness. The economy that we have is based on ego system awareness and given preferences. But the economy, that's the economics and the economy that we have. But the economy and the economics that we need needs uh, to revolve around ecosystem awareness, to, uh, around an awareness of the whole system that we are a part of.